Hi everyone, I'm Claire Stone and welcome to the Celeb Angel Conversation podcast. And today I have got the fabulous Lisa Appleton. Hi Lisa, Hi. thank you so much for joining us today. Hi Claire and thank you so much for having me on your podcast. <laughs> Pleasure. So you may know Lisa, she is a familiar face on reality TV. She's been on over a hundred shows in the UK and America and she is most known for Big Brother. That's right. I've, um, I've, um, well I started, my first reality show was a sports show because I'm an ex-athlete and I am um, bodybuilder as well and I got asked to go on a TV show called Body Heat. And the TV shows have been on are mainly reality TV shows and documentaries, which have all, like Mexican Wave, escalated from one show to another, to another, to another, to another. And it's, yeah, it's been a journey and a half. And my dream is, my dream is to help people on a much bigger, much bigger scale with, you know, I've got this profile and it's doing something with it, you know, the, the goodness of who I am, Lisa Appleton. You know, I'm into fitness, health, new, nutrition, holistic lifestyle, and it's leading to, it's opening many doors and opportunities up for me. Amazing. Today, we are going to be talking about your spiritual life, though, Lisa. And so I've got to ask, I already know the answer to this question, but for the audience, do you believe in angels? 100%. 100%. And wings, definitely. <laughs> yeah, one hundred percent. It's I. I came across angels by chance through a bad experience, and that experience was um. Give you a brief, a brief um summary. I was a uh, an into athletics growing on. And I was flying. I was just just very athletic, and I loved it. So I wanted to be an Olympic athlete. I had it in my head because you have a dream growing up don't you now my daughter wanted to own a sweet shop <laughs> when she was growing up. that's used to joke about that and although I had this entertaining side uh, fitness is very demanding and it's hard work dedication discipline and I was just super super fit I was winning all the races at my school I was getting medals the headmaster would have me out um, and everybody in the assembly to give me a medal for achievements in athletics as well as wanting an athletic club. Then I got injured. I was really badly injured. And it all stopped overnight. It wasn't just like a build up, it was a shock. So um, I couldn't walk. It was um, a really bad injury. And I've seen having physio and being told that you're injured and you can't walk for nine months, roughly. And you've got to pack in your dream. And trying to get that dream back, get fit again as well. You know, not just the goal, ambition, but to get fit again. So I started, I went into a deep depression. I was leaving, and I just left school as well. Well, I started smoking and I started drinking. And, you, you know, lads chat you up. So you're getting into lads a bit, you know, going on dates. And let's go to the disco, let's smoke in the park. Let's have a few bevies in the park and get, you know, sloshed. And I just remember thinking, this is just so, it was no good for my health. So my health was suffering. I was trying to get over not being able to train anymore, which is, it was really like bad. And I started feeling not well in myself, you know, which you wouldn't do if you're not exercising, you're smoking all of a sudden, you, you're drinking, you're getting stressed out on dates with, you know, boys and it's all this I just thought what's the future hold me you know and I was really so I started having panic attacks I did those panic attacks and anxiety and stress were just really really bad it's I used to feel like I couldn't breathe I'd lie down on the floor I'd have to I couldn't stand up because I thought I was going I was going to pass out anyway because it's not till afterwards you'll learn about panic and anxiety where it restricts your shallow breathe and you, you think you're going to have a heart attack or you're going to die or something's awful is going to happen to you and, and it's just a vicious circle and then I, I'd lay down on the floor and I wouldn't be able to move and I thought I couldn't even breathe it was, it was like I was being strangled from top to toe 
and then I'd start dreading going out in case I had to lie on the floor and act in this way, you know, and pass out. So I kept making, you know, steps to go on the bus, go and look for a job in, in um, town, go to the bank, you know, and or whatever I had to do and shop and do normal things. And just anything would trigger it off. Just cues, um, lifts, claustrophobia kicked in then. It was, it was a blasted nightmare. And that's, I don't swear, but it was. I really feel like it was really, really difficult. And, this, and I thought, how am I going to get through this? And that's when, through that bad experience, I started praying to Jesus. Jesus came. Well, Jesus is always in your life and he's always there. But I started praying to Jesus. And when this panic happened, I just pray and pray and say, you know, dear Jesus, please help me. Please um, remove these feelings of stress and anxiety and fear. And then I thought, this is, and I start, and it goes straight away. And I thought, wow, this is the power of, you know, Jesus and prayer. And whenever, so I started to feel comforted and free. And that's when I knew what, a, you know, this is really good good positive energy here that's making has lifted me out of it straight away so i that was my i had pictures of jesus in my socks in my purse in <laughs> put a picture that. in my sock <laughs> if i was passing my driving test the picture was in my sock I said, please please help me pass my driving test <laughs> and everything just felt really good so I felt like I've got a guardian angel here. This is fantastic. And started understanding religion and stuff. And then Archangel Michael came through. Yay! Bless. Thank you so much, Jesus. And Archangel Michael came through. And I, I just took, had a little like prayer of Archangel Michael and had it aside in my bed. And I'd say the prayer every day and carried it with me. I carried it with me everywhere. And I said all the prayers. And then Next minute, I've got two jobs in one day. One day, but Jesus is the one who came in an Archangel Michael. And it was just, that was it then. I was, there was no going back. I just totally believed in angels and that. And I felt the energy around me. You actually feel, there's, it's like, you know, it's like, mm, it's like, you just feel it. it's like someone's blowing this loving energy all over and you feel the movements around you and the hugs as well at night time you feel those hugs and you're not scared one bit you don't think oh there's a ghost in my room um because you know it's a beautiful angel and you just smile and it's peace and um into angels and understand you know knowing that they're there and they do love you and they do help you through these things their angels are very important in your life. You know, if you're feeling negative or down or it doesn't matter who you are, we don't judge. We do our best not to judge, but reach out to them because they'll get you out of that mode, that feeling of whatever it is of negativity, depression, illness, or just feeling like you, you might not be the best person you could be, but just reach out to them because they do help you. And the feathers started. Those feathers were everywhere, Claire. You just kept appearing, just flying by, just in front of you, just random places like you'd open the drawer, it appeared in your bedroom. I'd, I'd think, how's that got there? Well, I've opened the window, it's probably flown in. How's it ended up in the drawer? How's it, you know, one would stick to you, they'd swirl around you. And then um, I had a wonderful experience, and it's always sometimes when you've not got your mobile phone on you. <laughs> Sometimes things are shown to us and we're not maybe meant to record them. I don't know. But these, I was in a car park and a funnel of angels just fell all over me from the sky and they were white. It was just hundreds and hundreds of these, oh, thousands of these feathers everywhere. And they just swirled round. And it was, feathers were, there were signs all the way. And also you've heard the saying, cat with, cat with nine lives. They've, the angels have definitely saved me from maybe some incidents that could have been like for example I ended up under a lorry on a bicycle I used to do a lot of cycling I had my daughter on the back of the bike and I was cycling and it was very very icy in the winter I used to cycle everywhere with her every day I know the, um, the girl who cycled all over Warrington my hometown 
loads of people. <laughs> used to, the horn was always honking, honk, honk, honk. And I went flying and the lorry was just going quite slow um, because he's pulling up in front of traffic. And I went flying and I went right under the lorry and it's just the health position and everything. I just, Sophie was protected in the back of the child seat. I had the best child seat, that's one thing. Um, I made sure I had the best one. She was strapped in and she was fine. Um, I did actually, I did break my shoulder, but I didn't go to, I didn't know until years later because it was always like sore and stuff. But it was a minor break and overall I was, I was fine. I was absolutely fine. A couple of weeks healed um, really quickly. And just to be under a lorry and not be, you know, and, and another one, I was um, driving in ice and the van lost control. I was delivering sandwiches down the back lanes and it was quite hilly and it was going down and then the van lost control and I was just, it, it was an ice sheet and I thought, and I prayed to the angels and I thought, it's going to stop at some point. It's either going to hit a tree because it was like on an incline or it's going to hit a fence or it was either fence or tree and it um eventually came to a stop so again I'm very lucky i do believe you know you need that protection and angels do protect you if you chat to the angels as well i noticed oh you know if you're looking for a birthday present for someone or you don't want to buy them or you're looking for something you can't find it i ask the angels for help say so, you know angels sometimes say certain angel names or just ask my guardian angels can you find me this can you know come across this bargain and won't be held it appears so quick might be like as soon as 10 minutes and my book balls beyond anxiety love light success talks about you know all the positive things of healthy living and how to bounce back from rock bottoms yeah, yeah and I mean, i've also got you, and i've got um a podcast yeah. with a true crime podcast with Bryn Kurt james hammond who is um, he's a successful best-selling author um, and very popular in America, Los Angeles. We've got a true crime podcast, so Bryn and Lisa, and we've got lots of projects and, and we bring awareness to missing children and stuff and missing people and try and, you know, bring awareness and to make the place a better world and to help people with um, anxiety as well and stress. Lisa, do you ask the angels to help you with your true crime podcast in any way? Yes, I, I always have my crystals out. True crime podcast is, some people say it's quite a dark topic, and me and Bryn have spoken about this. It's quite a dark topic, like we, we covered the Cecil Hotel, you know, in Los Angeles, downtown LA, and it... But what we do is we, we talk about it and then we tr try and sort of pick what people learn from it is, is how to prevent these things from happening as well. Because there's a certain patterns that you might notice that it's places might be more in, um, you know, might be more in poverty or unhealthy relationships or, or something or the media, like a lot of these, you know, very famous people die, you know, quite young you know we, we've covered Whitney Houston we've covered um Brinston best-selling books on you know Anna Nicole Smith and Aliyah Aaliyah and when you, you know you build up an I a picture of exactly what might have led to these tragedies and it can well hopefully bless put closure to you know some of it but also prevent it happening in the future as well so I yeah it's I think because that it's sort of um, quite sad and dark. So I have all my crystals out. I say my prayers. I have all my crystals out. And I just pray that I'm, you know, me and Bryn are protected and that we have a great podcast and that um, we bring, you know, some enlightenment to it. Have you so ever, have you ever um, done one of your podcasts and forgot to ask the angels to protect you or Jesus to protect you and then absorbed some energy and had like a negative um experience or negative emotions do you absorb energy in that way because i know you're quite yes. psychic yourself aren't you very psychic yes that's a psychicness i developed 
as time went by, I didn't really believe in myself. And then I, just as I've got older, I think because I've, you know, been, I've built it up, you know, the, because I'm like um, a real person there, I think you're given that gift, aren't you, when you flow in harmony properly and in the best pure way, I think you're given that gift. So I've been given that gift more so as I've got on, so it's, that's good. But the podcast, you're right, and it is so true. And um, there's a couple of times I got distracted, and this is where you've got to, when you're, you're off centre or you get distracted, watch distractions, because those times that I didn't um, pray or was late or rushing around and distracted, that those podcasts, that energy was absorbed in. I think I've had about two podcasts that weren't brilliant with Bryn. And we, and it's that energy come in and it, the podcast didn't feel right. We've had about three. I've been doing it for a year now, so bringing these third true crime, but the, about the three times. And then your less sort of was all over the place. So I, I think I had absorbed some um, negative energy in. Yes, yeah, yeah. so it is so important to. So you learn from that, again, thinking that's how easy, you know, you can have, you know, the positive and be absolutely fine, but don't take your guard down. Yeah. And have angels ever showed you, do they ever give you information like how to clear your energy if you have absorbed something or like mm -hmm. guided you? Like, you know, when, um, when you had the accident under the lorry, how... How did you know that it was a divine being that, that has protected you through this? Did you see or sense anything? Or is it because you ask the angels every day? Do you ask for that protection? Is it is it faith or is it actual um a natural experience? That's too I, I feel, isn't it? <laughs> yes, yeah, there's quite a few questions. That's yeah, it's, it's really good questions. The Definitely the angels um, protect you. I ask for that protection, but I feel them around me. I have them in my, my everyday life. And during, you know, the time with the lorry, I, you know, I was cycling and I knew that I'm on a busy main road. It's icy. It's risky. So there is some elements of, you know, when we go out and do things to be expected. So I kind of, you know, maybe, you know, you could say it's, it, was, it was silly because only in my twenties, but you learn from that. Now, I wouldn't actually do that again now. I wouldn't go out on my bike on ice with your child on the back. <laughs> you're in your mid, you know, you're in your mid-twenties and you just sort of, oh yeah, I'm off to the shops in winter. <laughs> you know? um, so there, there is elements of sometimes you've got, but, but I was protected and I do believe that is, you know, they the made sure that wasn't you know it wasn't like it turned out you know fine and you know my daughter was fine as well but do sort of everything's learning and experience yeah. isn't it yeah we think we're invincible when we're in our 20s as well and we always think this is good this will never happen to me and we, we take a lot of risks don't we but that okay. is how we learn um, can I ask you have you physically seen an angel because we all have different clear senses and some people they feel something, other people, they visually see it or they see it in the mind's eye because there's mental mediumship, physical mediumship. What can you share with us? Like, what do angels look like to you and how you receive them? I definitely receive angels in the form of their presence and energy. I feel the presence. I've felt that. It's like... Um, like you know the, they definitely move everything you can feel it you know like just all around you it's like that moving energy and I feel the presence there I feel um, a warm presence as well especially with Archangel Michael I see orbs now I've been seeing orbs for years I'm just so used to seeing orbs now um big orbs with shapes in like white and a, the, the latest one and flicks of blue all the time flashing me it's always just like proper like electric blue it's lovely so i see that and then i've actually seen like blue orbs and i've had them on pictures as well so you saw people say oh it's just dust 
or it's you know just um your phone's a bit you know it's the phone picking up on something but i've actually videoed it as i can't i'll find it somewhere video the blue orb and it's moving around jumping around my feet and around me and in front of me and walking with me and you know and it's doing different things so i'm thinking well if that's a speck of dust but i actually see them physically and the orbs i've seen i have seen ghosts i've seen a couple of ghosts and angels i see i'm um, like colors you know like sometimes when i concentrate you can see my aura i've seen um my aura's i well i how i see it is very like gold it's like like amber and gold and um the presence is the main one though so maybe it's something i can um to, you know develop yeah is to actually see them and i have i have I do get messages where I do hear things. I hear messages, positive messages. Yeah. Yeah, they, and they guide you. And I also ask the angels for signs. I just, you know, ask the angels. And I, some, of the, some of the angels I've got for them, obviously your, I do your meditation, Claire, which is beautiful. I've, been, I've been, obviously been on your work, you know, one of your workshops and I've had healing from you. So I've got more into, you know, the actual names. I've read your book as well, which is absolutely absolutely brilliant and so I, I talk to the angels that you've mentioned in the book angels that i've not you know i've never sort of chatted to before different angels archangel faith ah. archaea faith yeah yeah she's and quite a lot um your Arch archangel uriel and and um, so other angels and i ask for signs to show me you know i say prayers to people and signs that everything's going to be okay and they always show you a sign <laughs> always show you signs and, um do you get is, is there any like really memorable moment which you like even the most cynical person just couldn't say like that was a sign uh, that you know synchronicity 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 happens to me a lot anyway it's like i'll be thinking of a word you know, like it's something positive or something connected to something doing it, and then it flashes up on the telly at the same time. Numbers constantly, always seeing 22, 22, 22 on, on the clock. Um, I see, we saw 11, 11, <laughs> yeah, um, that quite a lot. But 22, 22, it was on billboards, on your computer, on your phone. Wake up in the night to go to the toilet to check your phone. 20, you know, it's always got uh, the 22 number on it. So numbers everywhere. And certain, my birthday is 22nd as well, it's 22, 22nd of May. And just numbers, numbers, and certain things like that, which it is a very sure positive sign. So when you see a number, what does that, how do you take that? What does that mean to you? So if you just went to the, I mean, I came in the house one day last week and my cooker said it was 11.11 11, and that wasn't the real time. And I thought, ah, uh? yeah, uh -huh. so I knew that that was some kind of sign. So when I see something like that, I'll go into a meditation and, and ask, what is it you want me to know? Because I feel like the angels want to give me a message and mm -hmm. I might not, you know, it's like they're tapping you on the shoulder, like, hey, <laughs> we, we want to <laughs> with you. So is that, um, is that how you feel when you see the numbers or do they can, sometimes it's confirmation, isn't it? And comforting that, you know, everything's going to be okay if you're going through challenges and then you keep seeing 444. Um, to me, that mm -hmm. the angel saying, you're all right, we've got you. Yes, definitely. And it's, it's not a coincidence because it was, happening all the time for years and years and years and then you move on to you know and i see rainbows all the time double rainbows and rainbows but one of the things that happens quite a lot is certain things get moved in my property they do get moved i've had um i've got a video of a crystal moving on its own shaking and moving and um, so that's got vibration because they, they hold vibrations, don't they? Yeah. And the also the um the heart there has got writing on it and it turned round. 
it was moved. Just the objects get, things get moved. So I think that's, I think there's someone there, you know, but it's a, it's a nice feeling, you know, someone's there, you know, to say. And growing up as well, the piano played on its own. He used to play the piano, he was sister. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for the, the Fergo, yeah, the loaf bread, the hogus bread, <laughs> play that. Uh, the piano started playing, and think, and then my daughter used to say to me, "This is a late when she was young. She was only like three or four. She was going, lady there, mummy, lady, lady, and like looking. And uh, that the spirit world is active, basically. Angel guides are there. Your loved ones." have moved over to spirit world are there the spirit world is active we're here for x amount of time to learn and grow and experience and to make a difference and, they're and all that's the girls. and we're all that like, sorry we're all looking out for us and they're all looking out for us most definitely so um yeah i actually yeah i have especially at night i wake up at four a lot in the morning would that make sense for anything? Four o'clock, where I feel like the spirit world's connecting to me massively because I'm in that state of complete. I've had some rest, yeah. And I always think about my loved ones, my grandparents, my dad, animals, you know, that have passed over. I've actually felt the animals around me as well. I've actually, it's like they're there. You know, the whole, you know, when it's an animal, your pets, loved ones, or you know, when it's a loved one. And you know when it's the angel, and they definitely communicate. Yeah, and they feel so. Their energies feel so different, don't they? Yes. Yeah, they do. Their energies do because you you, you know you know who it is. Now I have actually I have actually had my loved ones that have passed over kiss me on the cheek. So yeah, that is whether people some people might think you've yeah, had a few to drink and yeah <laughs> you know you're making it up. But no, you actually do feel it. So you know, I've had the hugs and the kiss on the cheek and it's actually smelt like the person. You know, everyone's got a scent and a feel around them and an energy that you know. And I, even my granddad tobacco, you know, the pipe. You know, it, and you feel that round you, yeah. And it's... Lisa, when um, I was giving you some angelic healing... And I just got that strong smell of her spray. <laughs> yeah, my grandma's. <laughs> Your nan used to have, wear a lot of her spray and you just couldn't stop laughing, could you? <laughs> yeah, it's the, and, the, and the trinket, yeah, because my grandma was, she, she loved the hairspray. It's a very, um, hairspray's a very must-have, you know, crew, bless the soul. And the trinket, you know, the music box with the ballerina in that she gave, um, she had in her family. Obviously, for many, many years, she gave to me and my sister. It's, and it's a little sherry box. It looked like a library book. And it had um, three sherry glasses in it and a canister of sherry and the ballerina. And I used to play it over and over again and think of her. And when we was at her, hers, we used to play it all the time. So, you know, we so that's a, and you were right about that. And you also said, I'd never been to Los Angeles, Claire. And it's one of those things I had in my head. You know, we grow up with, watching Disney and Hollywood and some of our favourite stars and music people are from Hollywood and America and and I just thought I'd love to go one day. Do you ask for angel guidance every day? Yes. Yeah, they're, I'm that every day I try and I start off in the meditation. I start off with your meditation most days, which I absolutely love. I've, and I do my own little ones, you know, throughout the day when I'm doing bits of yoga and stuff. And I, I talk to them all the time. But sometimes when you're busy, I call it being distracted. You can forget. And that's what we're talking about. Like, you know, sometimes, like the times of the podcast, you know, you can forget that. Um, and you can lose. You, you've got to really stay focused and centred. And like say you're in a situation where you're out and about and that someone's having an argument, it might be in the supermarket or someone's having an argument in wherever. It's like kind of staying out of it. Don't, you know, add to that, add to that fuel, add to that fire, add to that energy because you, you can't, you can't. So the best way to diffuse it is I just send the angels there. So I do send angels to people to help them. I'll just say, angels, please help, you know, these people this situation whether 
you know it's a family domestic or whatever happens that say please angels help them and soon that it sort of like you know fizzles out because it's that's the best you can do rather than try and get involved in the you know and split the argument up or the dispute or it could be someone um an ex security um who worked in nightclub for years and you're dealing with people that have took drinks and drugs at the same time and the fights always started and arguments at about half 11 midnight it was hey ho here we go and you'd have to you know try and sort of domestic out at like midnight someone who's had too much to drink and it's you just have to diffuse it so again i prayed for that help straight away jesus please help please help <laughs> And I'd be, oh, and the angels help, Archangel Michael, please help the situation. And then it would, it would just, it would vanish, it would go. You yeah, have it would... a favourite angel? I think my favourite angel is Archangel Michael, because that's the angel that has really, the one that has really been there all the time, that I feel around me. And yeah, and yeah, Archangel Michael. Yeah. Yeah, he is um he is one of the favorite angels for many people um because his energy is so he strengthens us and you just feel so safe in his presence, don't you? You do. You do definitely. And thank you Archangel Michael. Thank you Archangel Michael. Thank um, you so much. Lisa, what would you say to people who don't believe in angels? I am um, funny enough we're always going to get this people don't believe in psychics people think it's rubbish people don't believe in ghosts people don't believe it's rubbish I'm studying ufology at the minute astrobiology for extraterrestrial life people don't believe in aliens I do I've actually had experiences there there's different lives on other planets and there's more going to come out there but when people don't believe in something, firstly, it's very difficult <laughs> to try and convince someone. <laughs> no, I can convince them anyway. So what I learned is, I think I used to get on people's nerves when I'd say, you know, go and see this psychic or chat to, you know, pray to Jesus, chat to the angels, ask them for help, see what happens. And they're just like, I don't believe in all that, you know, I don't believe in all that. So I just stopped saying anything. And I thought, I don't want to stop saying anything because that will help the person. So what I do is then, I, I, what I say to them is, well, if, you, if you've got, a, you know, if you're feeling down or you've got a problem or a family member's not well or something like that, or you, 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 you're looking for a new job, ask the angel to help you and it will happen. And then come back to me and say, it's, it's not, you know, happened. But so I've tried, you know, different tactics like that. But failing that, I just like to say, I just pray for them that the angels help them with their journey and path. And I think some people amble along at a steady pace and don't change. And I think life's about expanding for the better. Because why could, we're not meant to just be in one place, just ambling along, you know, just, at the, you know, and things could be a lot better things could be better things will be better you've got to make it happen and expand and all this you know when you're connected to the earth we're all connected to because i'm studying it astrobiology we all started off as you know cells and energy and membranes and dna rna and all different elements and gases that brought us together and we evolved our animals plants people you know we're expanding and we're connected to all of this so reach out to it grab it don't be down there staying in a pit or dark hole that's sucking you in. So your life force is draining out of you. Hello, no, be free and believe in it. Believe in it because you'll be a lot better for it. That's what I say. <laughs> in it. Yeah. Like the hands, the hands are everywhere, aren't they? <laughs> hands up. I mean, it's just having an open mind, isn't it? Um, you know, we don't put our beliefs on to other people but if people will just have an open mind then they can see for themselves I mean I was on in December I was on channel 4 Steph's packed lunch 
and um, I did an experiment oh. and um, I called it the angel experiment and I said right okay because I knew you know the majority of the people watching it um, may not necessarily believe in angels so that was why I said to them just humor me you know ask angel if you're there if you really exist give me a sign and I, and I said you actually tell the angel what you want to see to prove that it exists because wow. angels can do anything, they're unlimited so there was one woman who I, oh, and I said don't ask for a white feather that's too easy ask for something like a purple feather or you know something um mm -hmm. you believe would be something you wouldn't necessarily come across over the next week and one of the ladies in the studio, she said that she asked for um, a teapot. And she said, is that stupid of me to ask for a teapot when we'd finished recording? And as she says it, a woman walks into the studio with this tray and she just got this teapot. It was a Christmas pudding. Oh. <laughs> wow. Cups of tea. So I just tapped her on the shoulder. And I said, there's your teapot. <laughs> so I got a lot of emails wow. and, and Instagram messages after I've been on that show. Like literally I walked out the studio and looked at my phone and there was someone had asked, a man had asked for an Amazing. elephant. And then there was elephants on the TV show straight after. Steph straight Park. after. Someone there you go. An orange Mini Cooper car. She thought that was quite rare, you know. She said, what? Yes. They were all sending me the photographs with the evidence. <gasps> That's amazing. I actually, I, I did watch you on Steph's Pat Blunt because I knew, yeah, I'd seen that you was on stuff. Thought you, you fantastic and you, you'd be amazing. And um, yeah, it's so true that, that you ask to show for a sign, ask the angels and there's your proof. And it, and it does, it does happen. And there you go. And so every single one of them, it, can, it happens and quite quick. They saw. Yeah, yeah. Wow. And I bet it's changed their way of thinking, hasn't it? Oh, definitely. Because, you know, if the, if spirituality is new to you, um, you know, on the concept of angels, I mean, I've always believed in angels, but because I've always seen them. Uh, but the family, my immediate family who raised me, they never seen angels. And even though they were Christians, our priest was one of them <laughs> were he didn't even like us talking about angels. I don't know why, because I know a lot of Catholics. I, I was amazed when I found out that they had angel prayers. I was like, I want to hear these prayers. The prayers. Oh, beautiful. Didn't, didn't like them at all. Um, and when I would say things that I'd seen, he used to say that it was devil's work. And of course, that would really frighten my family. So they were really closed down to these ideas until I... Like you, I suffered with anxiety as well when I was 40 and I had agoraphobia. Mm. Oh, and horrible, isn't it? Angel that coached me out of out of this like disorder, this anxiety disorder, by setting tasks for me, and Angel told me how to do it. But it's I always say this isn't because I'm special. There's nothing special about me. The difference is I ask. The you angel ask. Yes. I am constantly like, come on, angels, show me this. I want to know about that. I'm Sagittarius. I'm curious. I want to know everything. Yes, well, <laughs> too right. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, and you know, when it was actually the angel Ariel, the lioness of the goddess. That's what her name translates to. She's an angel of strength and courage. One of the divine feminine angels. It was her that answered my prayer. But it was me literally saying, "Come on, this cannot be life." I was on my knees begging, like, somebody help me, God, whoever, just somebody help me. And that was who answered my prayers. And that's what changed my life. And my family seen the massive change in me. I'd gone from being, I was so thin because I felt sick with nerves all the time. I right. didn't have uh, God, but, you know, with you. that anxious, you just feel sick. Mm -hmm. to I was in fight or flight, like, nearly all day. Didn't go mm -hmm. to didn't do anything just sat in my bedroom smoking basically <laughs> it was absorbed it absolutely bless you absorbed all your life consumed by these feelings yeah um, and it can get a grip of you when it gets to that stage it's 
gets a grip of you, doesn't it? And then you've got to, there's a way out and there has to be a way out. And definitely the angels were, were there and you, you asked for the help. I asked for the help and I got it. And then I was so inspired yes. because I, it was a miracle that I, had, I was healed from this. I never thought that I, it would be taken from me ever. And when it was, I thought, I have got to spread the word. Like people can heal themselves naturally because look at me. I, if I can do this 14 year old girl who knows nothing, I didn't even know what anxiety meant. I didn't know. I, yeah. had I just knew yeah. that I kind of went outside. That's, oh, bless you. Exactly. Very similar to what happened to, happened to me. You don't understand what's happening. Oh. Then you ask, then you understand, you find out it's anxiety and you ask for the help. Yeah. And it's freed us, it's freed us both, which we're very, um, and it, we, I think maybe it meant to happen to us because we're meant to spread that, as we say, the, the love and light. Yeah. Help you people. have to spread it. And, we, you know, you're helping people and it's, you do it in your everyday life. That's the best you can do is to, you know, just spread that love and light. You, and people are drawn to you. You find people drawn to you as well. Drawn, very drawn to you. Children are always drawn to me. <laughs> <laughs> Children come to the house to play with my daughter. They don't play with her. They're talking to me the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> but you're such, a, you're such a, an interesting, beautiful person. A breath of fresh air as well. Lovely to be around. I've met you quite a few times, and I think you're the most, one of the most amazing people ever. <laughs> You're beautiful inside and out. Lisa, can I ask you one last thing? Yes. Before we started recording on this call, um, you just briefly mentioned to me that last night you had an experience with Archangel Gabriel. Would you just share that story? Yes. I was, um, I was, I'd been asleep for about an hour and then all of a sudden, Archangel Gabriel just was there and it was just there just just everything the feel the name whoops oh it's not sorry the, the thing has gone off I was in my head was there the presence Archangel Gabriel and I, I sat up and woke up and I thought I said oh, hello I said thank you Archangel Gabriel for being with me thank you um obviously archangel gabriel was there for a reason must have been giving me a message or sending some some comfort or a message and I, I did pray like you know this is i said this is you know is there a message something i need to hear or no and then i was thinking of you as well then you came into mind claire and i thought well i knew we was doing our zoom today and i felt like it was connected possibly to, you know, me and you hooking up today, <laughs> doing our, our Zoom. But Archangel Gabriel was basically saying, I'm here, I'm around you, I'm with you. And um, yourself as well. And it was just a really nice feeling. It was just one of, yeah, just a very peaceful, loving, positive, positive feeling. It's really interesting because a lot of people are um, coming across Gabriel lately. I've noticed mm -hmm. when I'm just scrolling on Instagram and different things, people, the card, Oracle card that they pulled is Gabriel or Gabriel's around a lot. And funnily enough, in my um, angel school, the angel mystery school, we work with an angel a month and the angel that we are working on is Gabriel as well. Ah, that's interesting. So that's where that Gabriel's coming. Well, Gabriel is the angel of spring. Wow. You know, angels are androgynous, but, you know, for us humans, we see them as male or female. And, you know, what that really means is, um, because this has got nothing to do with gender, it's about energy. So masculine energy, which is logic, linear, get things done, taking action, and then there's mm. feminine, which is intuitive and nurturing and going within. So these archangels emulate specific qualities which can help us archetypal mm. energies. 
And actually the female term for Archangel is Archaea, which you already know because you said it before. And yeah. I like perceive Gabriel to be a feminine angel, but I kind of perceive Gabriel as a masculine angel because there is a feminine aspect of Gabriel, which is hope. Mm the Archaea Hope and her name so Gabriel means strength of God and hope means wish of the goddess so together these two angels because angels are you know in reality they're just energy they're just rays of light but we see them we might see them in humanistic form with wings and different things because that's what's comfortable for us that's how we process them uh, so there's no right or wrong in how we perceive an angel but we've just had um, in the northern hemisphere, we've just had the spring equinox. Ah, this is interesting. Wow. <laughs> the angels of new life, new beginnings, the sense. Of children and women and the sacral chakra and how we manifest. So I think that Gabriel, on, a, on some level, Gabriel's energy is really prevalent across Earth right now. And I'm, I'm not sure if people are even aware of how much. Maybe they're just thinking it's them that's attracting Gabriel at the moment. But I can see everywhere. Gabriel is everywhere. Wow, that's amazing. And me saying, I didn't, know, I didn't actually know that. And um, Gabriel was, was with me last night. Yeah. And still is. That's yeah. amazing. Wow. Well, Thank you. He's the angel of purity as well. So he can purify your energy and especially your sacral chakra and your sacral chakra is where you create things you know it's like your portal to the cosmic womb of all creation so you can call in Gabriel and ask Gabriel to turn the soil so to speak and get out the weeds of your energy you know all them limiting beliefs and then you can plant new seeds of what you want to manifest and what you want to see in the future wow oh that's i'll be i'll be doing a bit of um planting seeds then <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in those seeds of intention well lisa thank you so much for joining us it's been an absolute pleasure as always uh, do you want to tell the listeners how can people find you people um thank you for having uh, thank you too i've thoroughly enjoyed being on your show claire thank you for having me on um thank you so much and Listeners can find me on Twitter at MS Lisa Appleton or Instagram at MS Lisa Appleton and also um, the podcast um, at Sobrin and Lisa on Twitter and at Sobrin and Lisa on Instagram. Amazing. Thank you. Whee! And yeah, love and light, everybody. Love and light. <laughs>